Good morning. Welcome to Change Pace Poetry number 52. My name is Leland Jamieson. I'll read three poems this morning from my book in vitro, New Short Rhyming Poems Post 9-11. And the first of these is called Water Sprouts. It's addressed to my son, uh, reflecting on his hasty departure for college. <clears throat> Water Sprouts Whatever had inspired you to prune out the water sprouts from our tired apple tree apparently expired in you about the time the last one that you clipped fell free. They lay upon the ground and withered brown waiting for you to settle all your doubts. I found no spit or tongue, for verb or noun, to urge that you pick up those piles of sprouts. Forgive me, please, the words I failed to speak. I chose to make no issue, kept it light. I cleaned them up for you despite my peak, appeasing you for the sake of peace. Not right. <clears throat> Were my love quicker, with a bolder gene, might we now gently meet more conflicts green? The form of that poem was a sonnet, and here is another. It's called Cupsoptic River, and it is uh, placed deep in the woods above Aquasic, Maine, it's written for a friend of mine who taught poetry to uh, both adults and children. And, uh, well, I won't give away the punchline. This is called Cupsoptic River. Quarter to four, by moonlight, we untied and hoisted off your car, your blue canoe. Cupsoptic River quickly showed her pride. A bull moose, huge, bell dripping, edged in view. We rested paddles, silently drifting by within twelve feet of him. He watched us go with guarded gaze, so as to verify we were not foe to fight, just rivers flow. Illumined brightly by the rising sun, a loon up high, and drafting close one after, a quack, and quack, way off another one was weirdly yodeling and quavering laughter. Feeling and passion, yes, Hugh, make the poet, that laughing loon is one, he won't outgrow it. This next poem is a terzarima in form. It's uh, written following a memory with, uh, written in memory of a visit w with my uncle Warren uh, in Miami. And um, this uh, event took place uh, <laughs> between Naples, Florida and Hartford, Connecticut. For several hours my flight had been delayed in Naples while they flew an O-ring in to replace one that had become too frayed. It seemed the jet fuel filler cap within the skin of its right wing was leaking bad. It threw my travel plans into a spin. In Philly... No connecting flights. Like mad, I ran with bags the whole concourse and caught a small commuter jet still on its pad. The door snapped shut behind me. Thanks a lot, I gasped, and buckled up as we rolled out on tarmac. Cleared, we took off like a shot. A 29-seat sob. We're at about 5,000 feet, the captain said. Keep seat belts on. 
broad storm front to our left. No doubt we'll have a bumpy ride, but I'm upbeat because we have a tailwind which is strong. It will make airtime short, if not too sweet <laughs> and turbulent. I thought back on a long and talk-filled stay with dear old Uncle Warren. Eighty he'd woven yarns told by a throng of pilots, plus his own, of their rip-roaring exploits when flying was man's newest bride and airline safety was an oxymoron. Bottomless freefall. Slingshot stone, I spied the moon above the clouds. Whoops! Lost the chair beneath my butt. These frolics amplified for me those stories Warren loved to share about flight's frontier days. <clears throat> and I zigzagged Twix now and then, Twix flights extraordinaire. Across the aisle, a barfing man just bagged his mouth. Some kid cried, Whoops, my chili mac! Up front, another heaved and retched and gagged. I felt for them, but couldn't quite hold back my Warren smile down to a three-point landing at 2 a.m. I craved a late-night snack. And of course I want to invite you to visit my website jamiesonspoetry.com You'll find there archives of this and other videos as well as the printed texts of the poems read uh, with each video. So instead of wondering what that word was you didn't quite catch my pronunciation of, you'll be able to see it um, in print. You'll also be able to examine the forms of the poems, which helps some folks who are studying such matters. It's been pleasant to chat with you. I'll look for seeing you next time. Thank you for coming. Bye.